Welcome back, friends. My name is Dan Vega, and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate for VMware. Today, we're over here on Twitter looking at a tweet that I sent out recently, and I thought this would be a good time to discuss this and go through a tutorial on it. So the tweet I shared was, did you know that there's a domain class converter in Spring Data that will convert any arbitrary input into a domain class managed by a Spring Data repository, CRUD repository to be specific? So if we go ahead and look at the screenshot, you can see on the left is a post controller that I'm using. I have a find by ID method that takes in a path variable of an ID. And the argument is a post. So Spring Data will use that domain class converter to take a look at that ID and then go do the find by ID lookup in the repository and assign it to the post. So we're gonna take a look at how to do this and I thought it'd be a good time to do it. Now, if you are not following me on Twitter, what is going on? If you're not, we're going to have to pause this video right now. Go over to Twitter, The Real Dan Vega. I'll leave a link in the description below. Please make sure you follow me over on Twitter. Lots of great discussions happening there. With that, uh, let's go ahead and head over to our favorite place on the internet, start.spring.io. This is a really good place to bootstrap a new Spring project. So we're gonna create a new project that uses Spring Data so that we can go ahead and take a look at this example. So I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna use a group ID of dev.danvega, we'll call the artifact DCC for domain class converter, and we'll use Java 17, and we'll need a few dependencies here. So we're gonna create a web application. Whoops, I can't see my keyboard. We're also going to use Spring Data JPA. You could also use Spring Data JWC if you like. And finally, we'll need a database, so I'll go ahead and use H2. So with those dependencies in place, we can go ahead and click on the Generate button. That will download a zip file. We can open that up in whatever ID or text editor you're most comfortable with. I'm gonna open that up in IntelliJ, and we'll go through the tutorial. All right, so what we're gonna do here today is build out a simple application, and we're gonna kind of revolve it around posts. The idea of a blog, a blog has a post, if we wanna look at all the posts, we can get a list of posts, et cetera. So this is gonna be a very simple model domain, uh, but we need something to kind of drive this tutorial, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create a new package. We will call this package model. Inside of here, we'll create a new class. We'll say this is a post class, and this is going to be our entity. So if you've never worked with uh, JPA, this may look a little funny. I'll see if I can get some content together on getting started with Spring Data GPA if that's something you're interested in. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials out there on that though. But what we're gonna do is mark this as an entity and we're going to create a private integer ID. And this is going to be the ID in our system. So we're gonna mark it with ID, that's javax.persistence. And that will give us pretty much what we need to get started. So we're gonna create a few more fields here. We're gonna say we'll create a title We'll create a, um, some content in the post. We will have a local date time for published on, and maybe we'll have one uh, for when it was updated. So I think that's enough. Uh, as part of a JPA entity, we need a no argument constructor. So if we weren't gonna have any constructors, you know, we get that implicit one, but we are gonna have one, so we wanna make sure we include that. So I'm gonna say public post. Uh, let's see what it's got here. Uh, wow, that looks pretty good. Thank you, uh, GitHub Copilot, for helping me out there. So local date time, updated on, published on, content string ID. So that will give us everything. Um, and actually, what I think I wanna do is I wanna make this simpler. So I don't need this because I know that when I create this, the published on and updated on will be local date time dot now, and that will be the same for updated on. Okay, so that gives me that. Now what I can do is go ahead and say getter and setter. I want that for each of these. I also want to go ahead and generate a two string, and that looks good. So now I have my basic model in place. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a repository for this. Again, this comes from the Spring Data world, so I'm going to create a new package. 
I'm going to call this repository. And inside of here, I'm going to create a new repository called post repository. And this is a type interface. This is going to extend the CRUD repository. That takes in a type and an ID. So the type is post. The ID type is an integer, so we're going to use integer, and that is everything we need to get some basic CRUD functionality out of the box. If you go ahead and on a Mac, I'm command clicking, I believe it's control click on Windows, you can jump into the CRUD repository and look at all the methods that it provides. Here in IntelliJ, you also have this structure, so you can kind of see what the class looks like. So you get your save, save all, find by ID, exists find all, find all by ID, et cetera. So you have all these methods that you would normally have to write out of the box just by declaring an interface that extends this CRUD repository, Spring will replace that interface with a concrete implementation at runtime and give you all of these methods. So this CRUD repository is important to what we're doing with this domain class converter. So make sure you use that. So I'm gonna hide that. Now what we need to do is create a controller. So I'm gonna go into package. I'm gonna call this controller. I'm gonna create a new controller. We'll call this post controller. All right, so I'm gonna start off by marking this with the rest controller annotation that just says, hey, this class is going to accept requests and return responses. I'm going to use the request mapping to specify the path for this. So we're gonna go slash API slash posts. And then what we need is an instance of our repository that we just created. So I might say something like private final post repository, and we'll call this posts. And then I'll go ahead and get this via constructor injection. So when Spring creates this controller, it will see that that post repository is a dependency of this class, and it will go ahead and insert an instance or auto wire in an instance for me. Now what I need is a couple uh, methods here. So maybe I have a git mapping, and in that git mapping, I want to return an iterable. So that's what, by default, the find all method will return is an iterable. So I'm gonna say uh, return an iterable of posts. We'll call this find all, and hey, go ahead and return the post repository dot find all method. So that looks good there. Then what we might have done in the past, so we're going to start with what we would have done in the past, and then I'll show you the domain class converter. So we might also have a git mapping for something like slash ID, and again, this is now dynamic. We don't want to just say slash ID because, or slash one, because then, you know, we're only able to get a post by the ID of one. We're using this syntax here to say this ID is going to be dynamic. And the way that we get that is, uh, so this is gonna return a post, we may say find by ID. And the way that we get that out of the path is by using a path variable annotation. And what we say is, uh, I'm gonna have a integer, uh, a type integer and an argument named ID, and Spring will go ahead and replace that dynamic ID, so it could be one, two, three, you know, whatever number we pass assign it to this argument. So now what I can do in my return statement is say, use that post repository. I know there's a find by ID method there. Go ahead and pass this ID. Now, this is a little bit different. If we look at find by ID, that is going to return an optional. Uh, so we can do a couple things here. Uh, we can say get, and that will return the post or we could uh, <clears throat> make the return type of this post or, uh, an optional of post. So whatever we wanna do here, let's go ahead and just say, let's return an optional. Uh, actually, I don't wanna do that because of what we're going to do in a second. So there is our controller. This is pretty standard stuff so far. The next thing that we gotta do is we have our model in place, we have a repository, we have a controller, we gotta talk about the connection to the database. So if we go into resources and application.properties, we're gonna set up a few properties here. We're using the H2 in-memory database just because it's nice and quick for this tutorial. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna enable the H2 console so I can see what's in there. I also want to not generate a unique name. 
Uh, if you're kind of new to the H2 world, I have a video I will leave in the description below on connecting to and configuring an H2 database in Spring Boot. So I also want to set a data source name. We'll just call this uh, JPA blog. And one more final thing, I like to go ahead and show SQL just when I'm working with JPA to see some of the generated SQL that's happening. Okay, so we're almost there. We have all these things happening, but we're not gonna have any data in our database. We need some data in there, right? So what I wanna do here is I'm going to create a new bean. We'll say a new bean. And this is gonna be of type command line runner. So a command line runner is a really nice functional interface that allows us to go ahead and do perform some logic, to execute some code after the application context has been created. So all of the controllers, the repositories, the things that we need in our application, those are ready to go and before the application runs. So that will allow us to go ahead and insert some data here. So the way that we do that is we get, we ask Spring for an instance of our post repository. So we can say posts, and what I wanna do here is posts.save, and I just wanna create one new post. So I'll say one new post, um, the ID is one. Um, my first post is gonna be called hello world in my blog, and welcome to my blog, that looks good. So that will create a new post and persist it off to the database. So when we run this application, if everything goes well, we should be able to look at the H2 console and see our post in the database. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and fire up this application. And we've had no errors. We have our JPA logging on, so we do see that a table was created and a new insert was uh, executed. So we inserted a row into the database. Let's go ahead and jump back to the browser. And if we go to slash h2 console, and what we wanna do is go to our data source name, which was JPA blog, and connect to that. Oh, we don't have that um, wrong one, sorry. JPA blog, connect, hmm. All right, let's find out what's going on. So if we look in our application.properties, we have a data source name. Oh, we're generating a unique name of true. We don't want that unique name, Dan. Let's go ahead and restart that. And if you would have looked in the logging there, you probably would have seen that. So I'm gonna head back to the H2 console. Again, the name of this should be JPA blog. And if we go ahead and connect, now we're able to see this. We have a post table. If we go ahead and run that, execute that SQL, we now see the one post in our database. So great, so far, so good. Head back to uh, IntelliJ here and take a look at what's going on. So now, if I look at my post controller, this is a find all and a find by ID. So if we go to slash API slash posts, this is the root git mapping, so that should execute this find all method and return all the posts in our database. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we should add one more in here just to kind of show the difference. Let's say, uh, let's just duplicate this, even though there's a save all method, that would take like a list and make this hello, you know, a lot easier. Uh, let's just say hello JPA. Okay, and let's restart this. We won't go back to the H2 console. We'll just look in here and see if our two inserts happened, and they did. And so what I wanna do now is go back to the browser and visit slash API slash posts to get a find all, and then slash API slash posts slash one or two, because that's the IDs that we gave them here. And we should be able to get the details for that post. So I'm gonna to go to localhost 8080 slash API slash posts. And there we go, we have our two posts being returned. And in this case, I wanna just return one. I can say one or I can say two. If they have a number that does not exist, we'll get an error, something happened on the back end. So 
What I want to show off today is the domain class converter. So if we go ahead and search through all the classes if using IntelliJ's uh, search here, I can look for domain class converter, and we'll see that this is it. Um, this is a converter to convert arbitrary input into domain classes managed by a Spring Data CRUD repository. So that's kind of the important part, is any arbitrary input. Um, in this case, we have an ID, so we know that if we have an ID, we want to create a post. So again, this isn't the um, biggest deal, but I think it is a really nice little time saver. So instead of doing this, what we can do is we can say the path variable name is going to be an ID. And what I want you to do is go ahead and use the CRUD repository that we've set up. Go look up that post by its ID and assign it to this argument. So now what I'm doing here is simply returning post because that lookup has been done for me. I don't need to call the repository and go do that myself. So let's see if that works. Let's go ahead and refresh. And I look at localhost 8080 API slash post slash two. Again, that works as expected. So pretty cool trick, uh, not a whole lot to it. Again, I just wanted to show this off in case you saw this uh, type of code in an application you're working on and didn't really understand like what is happening here. How is this able to work? Uh, you're able to understand that now. You know that there's a domain class converter. So I think we'll we'll leave that at that. Uh, a nice short tutorial today. Hope it was helpful. If it was, do me a favor. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding.